Well, this is where the dream begins for many, the Tattersall's October yearling sales. Book One is renowned for producing some of the very best racehorses in the world, and many will descend upon Newmarket in search of the next big thing. And Jimmy, this is an exciting time. Obviously, there are sales throughout the year, but this is, this is a big sale for you up and coming. Just tell us about the, the preparation and, and really everything that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, this is a, an exciting time, but obviously you approach but one of the October yearling sale with a, with a degree of apprehension as well, just because you wanted to go so well. These, these are the cream of the European yearling crop that we get in book one. There's an awful lot of hard work that's gone on, not just here, but obviously all the consigners to get the yearlings to this stage. So yeah, it's very exciting, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a few nerves out there as well. And in terms of here, we talk about what goes in with the people preparing the yearlings for here, but it, it's everything from people going out and inspecting these yearlings to, to mowing the lawns, and, and everything has to go into it. Yeah, I mean, as we stand here today, the paddocks already look in great shape, but there's still a lot of work to be done before we get to book one. And as you say, an awful lot of work goes to putting the catalogue together. The, our guys are out on the road scouring Britain, Ireland, and further afield to, to find the very best of the, of the yearling crop crop in, in Europe and, and also some from America as well. So yeah, there's a lot of hard work that goes into this and uh, let's hope it's all worthwhile come October the 8th. The, we get unbelievable support from, from our consigners year on year. We get so many top, top class yearlings from the Irish consigners in particular. And the reason they bring those yearlings to this particular sale is, yes, they believe this is the sale that will attract the widest cross section of the world's leading buyers. And uh, you know that's what we work very hard to achieve and, and we're thrilled with the support we get. You know, we, we spend a lot of time in Ireland looking at the yearlings and uh, maintaining the contacts we have. We're committed to Irish racing in terms of our race sponsorship. We sponsor the Tattersall's Gold Cup, have done for many, many years now. This year we sponsored the Irish 2000 Guineas. And uh, you know, it reflects the importance we place on the support from top Irish breeders and, and Irish breeders at any, every level of the market. up with some of the Irish consigners who are bringing their yearlings to this sale. Well, they have a huge international audience, uh, like on London's doorstep, it's so easy for people to get there. Whether it's buyers or clients selling through us, it just makes life easy for them. You know, we have clients from China, Australia, America, it's fantastic. They can fly in their ways to stay in London, they can come up to the sales, you know, it works out well. And just tell us a little bit about what you're, you're taking to the sale then. You, you have seven in total. We'll, we'll just mention, of course, you've got one by Galileo first of all. And tell us a little bit about the filly that you've got by Galileo. Uh, she's out of Mona Lisa, who was a very good race mare herself. Uh, she's a very nice filly. And sure, Galileo, like, he's just, it's lovely to be selling one. Really looking forward to it. Well, sort of at the other end of the spectrum, an unproven sire, because he's only got his first crop of, of yearlings this year, is Lope de Vega, and you've got a, a couple that you can sign for him. That's right, we have two Lope de Vegas and one McPhee, so I'm very excited about selling them. They look real racehorses at the moment. We have a Dark Angel who's really had a great year, you know, and uh, Teofilo as well, with Trading Letter. So, so sort of proven size and, and the less proven size. Dark Angel, of course, we, we can have a look at. And another one that we can have a look at is the Invincible Spirit. You've got a, a filly by her. Just tell us about her and we can see her as well. Yeah, she's a lovely filly, very racy looking. Uh, again, Invincible Spirit has had a great year. So, you know, it's, they're all by the right sires anyway. Um, you know, all the st staff in Tattersalls are so helpful, whether it's the guys that come out here in the spring to see the yearlings before they go to the sales, the auctioneers on the day of the sales, or the office staff and the, the stable staff there are excellent. Well, obviously, the book one at Tattersalls is one of the leading sales in the world and is a, an exceptionally strong sale, so it's essential to bring a very high class yearling to the sale, otherwise, it won't measure up. So, we pick nice horses to go there. Lot 352 is the first one we'll look at, and this one is out of Danielli. Just tell us a bit a, about her, really. Yeah, well, Danielli is a homebred by Dane Hill, uh, out of one of the um, founding mares for um, Bally Lynch, which I originally bought, called Ingabel. And Ingabel bred some really good fillies for us, including Eva's Request, who's Group 1 winner, and the Moigler Stakes winner, Priory Bell. 
In fact, this one looks a little bit like Priory Bell as it happens, but she's got the stamp of Lope de Vega as well. We can also take a look at lot 416, and this one's out of Gilded, who was a Royal Ascot winner for, for the Richard Hannon team. Plenty will, will remember her. It wasn't so long ago, but again, you know, perhaps how does she, she differ in any way from the other one? You say he stamps his stock, and, and has he done that again here? He has, but you can see a strong influence of Gilded in, in this particular filly. Gilded obviously was a very, very quick two-year-old, one the Queen Mary, um, maybe a typical Richard Hannon filly, and this one has a lot of that, the power, um, the precocity, the muscle on her. Norman's another stallion who you have. Just tell us a little bit about him and also the filly you have by him who you're selling. Yeah, this is a very nice filly out of Lundov, uh, a filly we raced ourselves by Pivotal. And, uh, Rundolph was a good filly, stakes placed a couple of occasions. This is her first foal, it's a good individual, very, very athletic and, uh, you know, probably uh, typical enough pivotal in many ways, but Lawman has, uh, you know, a very strong influence for good lookers. He, he tops plenty of sales and he's a boot and sire now, he's got a classic winner this year and just a judge. Plenty more to come, I would have thought. We want to sort of revert now to, to the sires and really the importance of sires and perhaps who is particularly influential at the top and perhaps how, how narrow that the top sires are in terms of how they spread their wealth. Yeah, I mean, at the moment we're very fortunate in Britain and Ireland to have some of the very best stallions in the world and we're equally fortunate to have an awful lot of yearlings by those sires in book one. In particular, the undisputed king, which is Galileo. We've got 47 yearlings by Galileo in book one. We've got very nearly 130 yearlings by the current top six in Britain and Ireland, which is a huge number. And, and, and these, these stallions are not just the best in Europe, these are, these are really the best in the world at this stage. And, and that's key to, the, to what's attracting all the leading buyers to book one at the moment. This is a sale that produces classic winners in very recent years for 50,000 guineas or under. Power, who won last year's Irish 2,000 guineas, was purchased for 50,000 guineas here. Samatar, who won the Irish 1,000 uh, the day after Power, was also from book one, costing 39,000 guineas. So these are, this is an equally important part of book one, and that's what brings trainers from throughout Britain and Ireland and Europe to the sale, looking for top-class yearlings at those sort of prices as well. And we have to remember that the reason that people are buying these yearlings is to race them. And of course you have a, a series of races for which they are eligible. Just tell us about the Tattersall's Millions. Yeah, the Tattersall's Millions is it's six races worth a huge £1.3 million in prize money. It's the most extensive sales race series of its type in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's been crucial to attracting trainers and owners to book one in the last few years at, at all levels of the market. They, they're enticed by the prospect of being able to race these horses for six-figure sums uh, on, over a number of different distances, two-year-olds and three-year-olds. It's an excellent initiative it, um, for the owners and it definitely helps boost prize money and it's a novel idea. We're lucky enough to have a horse called Clancy Avenue finished second and three-year-olds sprinting up beating ahead. Got a nice check for finish in second, but we've got a bigger one if you'd won. It's obviously something you have at the back of your mind for the when you're selecting yearlings in book one because obviously a lot of the better yearlings people are buying sort of as their potential classic horses, but there's plenty of horses there to suit for the races. It's an excellent initiative and it's a super boost for prize money. Just tell us for anybody as well that to give them an idea, you know, when these horses, going back to the, the big bucks ones, but when they're going through the ring and when we have Dare Mee's first progeny coming through the ring, it, it's incredible that the atmosphere that the place can create for these sort of things. Yeah, there is. There's a huge buzz surrounding Park Paddocks throughout book one, and I think that's an, a, another element that makes the sale so special. Well, Jimmy, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. We thoroughly look forward to book one of the October yearling sales. Huge expectation ahead of it, and I'm sure it will be lived up to.